Hi guys, obviously I am out today. I got hurt this morning, but I'm fine. No worries, I'll be back on Monday. So don't worry, all is fine. <laughs> Maui and I are gonna help you get through your grammar pages today though. So make sure you do your work. You need to finish it and turn it in to the tray before you leave if possible. Okay, you ready to help? Are you ready to help? You're not ready to help. They're probably not ready to do their pages either, but we're gonna do it. Okay, let's go. All right, so we're gonna start with page 85 here. And let's look at the top. Well, first things first, we need to write our name on our papers. Remember, if you don't put your name on your paper, I will not grade it. It will go into the garbage. So if you don't want that to happen, put your name on your paper. All right, so our, our directions here say, combine the sentences in each item into a single sentence. Our example is, Al refused to go to the top of the Empire State Building. He is terrified of high places. They put this into one sentence by saying, because he is terrified of high places, Al refused to go to the top of the Empire State Building. So they took this second sentence here and they put a conjunction in front of it, subordinating conjunction, and they moved it to the front. Okay, no big deal, you can do this. All right, let me try to get a little closer. All right, so our first one, let's see if this works. Our first sentence says, Broadway musicals are often difficult for amateurs. They have large casts and elaborate production numbers. Okay, well, let's try to do it just like our example. I would say, if I can spell today, because they have large casts and elaborate production numbers, Broadway musicals are often difficult for amateurs. So let's write that. Because they have large casts, and elaborate production numbers. Now, what kind of punctuation do I need after that? A comma. And then I'm going to keep going. Broadway, and that does need to be capitalized, Broadway musicals are often difficult for amateurs. Yep, and that's it. No big deal, that's all you're gonna do. What do you think, Maui? What do you think? Okay, moving on to page 86. All right, Maui, now you're in the way. Maui Lynn, thank you. All right, moving on to page 86. Our directions here say, rewrite each of the following items, combining sentences. Now, if you're in one of my classes that does not have this page assigned to you, then just don't do this page. All right, so we need to rewrite these sentences and we need to combine them. This is the same thing we just did on the previous page. So, number one, snow fell steadily upon the Acadian forest. It fell for seven days. All right, well, I'm going to take this right here, this seven days, and I'm going to put it for seven days right there. So, snow fell, or actually, let me put it right there, steadily for seven days upon the Acadian forest. I wonder where that is, Acadian forest. Maybe I can find out where that is and text it to me on remind. I'll give you five points of extra credit because I want to know. All right, so no big deal. Go through, do the rest of those. Yes, you need to actually write the sentences. You will be okay. This is English class. You can write a sentence. I know you can do it. I have the faith in you. All right, so let's move on to page 80. Okay, page 87. Exercise one. Now, this one kind of trips people up a lot of times. It says, improve each of the following sentences by adding the item or items in parentheses. Now, if you've omitted this exercise, that's fine, but I'm going to go through it anyway for those who are not omitting this exercise. All right, the first one says, Jody speaks French fluently, and they want me to add an appositive phrase. Well, and a positive, guys, is just a phrase that's set off by commas, meaning it's got commas on either side, that usually comes behind your subject, and it gives you more information about some noun in the sentence. So I want to put a little phrase right here behind our subject, Jody. And I'm going to say, Jody, comma, the girl at the counter. Now that phrase, that a positive phrase right there, gives me more information about my subject, Jody. It tells me where she is. So Jody, the girl at the counter, speaks French fluently. 
Pretty simple. No big deal. All right, let's do number two as well. The guitarist broke a string. Now, here they want me to add a prepositional phrase. Now, remember, your prepositional phrases, they start with a preposition. Obviously, those little words like to, under, beneath, before, um, of, on, things like that. They end with a noun. So, the guitarist broke a string. How about I say, on his guitar? There we go. Simple. The guitarist broke a string on his guitar. Simple, no big deal. Bottom piece down here, still on page 87. It says, divide the sentence below into two or more sentences. This is not difficult. I'm not going to go through this one too much because it would give you the answers and there's only one thing to do here. But just to give you some hints, although the doctors had not held much held out much hope for the surgery the family remained optimistic throughout the long hours of the operation now you could put a period there and instead of the next sentence saying thinking that if they wanted it badly enough surely things would work out i would say maybe they thought hi Mally, that if they wanted it badly enough. And of course, you're going to write it down here. Yes, you need to write it out. But that's what I would do. I'd put a period there, start my next sentence, and then there you go. Um, it says two or more sentences. I said I wasn't going to give you the answer, but I kind of did. So good for you. Now you have the answer. That makes it two sentences. Boom. Done. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, now we're on. Hello, Maui. Hi. How are you? How are you doing? We are now on page 88. I'm not going to go through this first section because it is exactly like one on the previous page that we did, so you should be able to do that. This one also, it's exactly the same. Divide these long sentences into short, clear sentences. Well, we'll let's do one of these, actually. All right, number one. Many people laughed at Adam when he first set out to find an old Spanish galleon that he had sunk in 1622. But within a year, he had converted many a disbeliever because in that short time, he had found millions of dollars of submerged treasure. Okay, now we need to break that up and make it at least two sentences. Maui, 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 you have to, Maui, you have to leave the page alone. Stop it. You are interrupting children's learning now. Quit. Quit now. No, no, we're not hopping on the page now. Quit. All right, here we go. So, maybe here I put a period and I'm going to take this conjunction out capitalize this next letter. Within a year, he had converted many a disbeliever. There we go. Now I have two sentences. Yes, you need to write it out down here. You'll be okay. But that's how you do it. Very Maui, are you helping? You got a pen. You stole one of my pens, but it looks like you're just tearing it up. Hey, 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 hey. Let go. Let go. Let go. You can't have pens. You can't have pens. No. Okay, I'm now on page 89. Exercise 1 says... Rewrite each sentence to make it begin with a one-word modifier, phrase, or a clause. Okay, so a one-word modifier or a couple of words for a phrase, a couple more words for a clause. Okay, example says, Allison sometimes babysits for her cousins. They changed it and said sometimes, comma, Allison babysits for her cousins. So they want you to put something in front of the sentence that has a comma behind it, and then the rest of the sentence. So here's my example. Phone the box office for further information. I would put... Later today, comma, lowercase, phone the box office for further information. And there we go. Let's look at exercise two. It says, rewrite the following paragraph using a variety of sentence Maui Lynn. Maui Lynn, stop. Try again. Rewrite the following paragraph using a variety of sentence structures. All right, this is no big deal. You can do this. All you're going to do is combine some of these sentences, maybe break a couple of them up. So let's do a piece together. Jeremy wants to be a veterinarian. He has loved animals all his life. Okay, well, I'm going to re you need to rewrite it down here, but that's what I would do to this first couple of sentences. Jeremy wants to be a veterinarian. I take that period out and I would say, because, lowercase he, has loved animals all his life. There I go. That's it. That's all you got. Okay, I'm now on page 90. My directions say rewrite each of the following sentences. Maui Lynn, you are in the way. Move. Rewrite each of the following sentences. Hello. Rearranging the words to make the sentences begin differently. 
Okay, so my number one says, oceanographers have worked endlessly to study the habits of undersea animals. Well, let's just kind of split this sentence and flip it. So let's say, in order to study the habits of undersea animals, hi Maui, comma, oceanographers have worked, God, my handwriting sucks today, endlessly, period. And that's all you need to do there. For this one down here, you can omit this no matter what class you're in. Just omit that. It says on another piece of paper, I don't like when y'all do those because you don't ever do them and then I have to take off for them. So let's just omit it and move on with our... I'm on page 91 now. And it says, each sentence below contains an element that is not parallel to the others. Rewrite each one using parallel structure. Okay, parallel means you're going to have some kind of series, some kind of group of things in your sentence, and they all have to look the same. For example, look at this first one right here. Sewing, painting, and two cook gourmet meals are Alice's hobbies. I have a series right here, but they don't all look the same. This one, these two have I-N-G on the end. But this last one has this extra infinitive in front of it, too. So I need to change this one to make it look like the rest. How do I do that? I add ing to this one and take the two off. So my new sentence would say, Sewing, painting, and cooking gourmet meals are Alice's hobbies. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Exercise two. Follow the instructions to write sentences that make good use of parallel structures. Okay. Uh, it says, Write a sentence with three parallel prepositional phrases that emphasize... Thoroughness. Okay, well, I don't care about that part. All I care about is that you can write a sentence using three parallel prepositional phrases. Remember, prepositional phrases, just those little phrases that start with things like on, of, to, like that. So let's just say, I like going to the mall, to the store, and to the park. That's three prepositional phrases. That's all I care about. Okay. The next one says two parallel clauses. All right. Again, don't care about this. We can actually take this part off on each one of them. Uh, I don't care about that right there. All right. So, two parallel clauses. Okay. I enjoy eating, comma, and I enjoy cooking. There you go. Those are two clauses. All right, same thing there. Three similar sentences. I came, I saw, I conquered. Things like that. That would be three parallel sentences. Okay, simple. We're on our last page here, page 92. Uh, your instructions say, tell whether the strength of each of the following passages is achieved purely through parallelism or through breaking a pattern. All you have to do here is figure out, is the sentence parallel is do, does it have several pieces that all look the same or is it not parallel in order to emphasize something so let's look at number one education makes a people easy to lead but difficult to drive easy to govern but impossible to enslave i see parallelism here very clearly i have easy to lead but difficult to drive easy to govern impossible to enslave each of these is a three-word phrase it has an adjective here, I'm sorry, an adverb here, and then you've got an infinitive phrase, and it, the whole sentence goes like that. So in the blank, I would put parallel, no big deal. This bottom piece, writing application, rewrite the following composition, varying in lengths, beginnings, structures, and poss possibly the patterns of sentences. All they want you to do here is rewrite these paragraphs and put some parallelism where you can, and switch some sentences around when you can. No big deal. It'll take you some time, take you some thought, but you can do that. And that is it. Maui, say goodbye. Say goodbye. No, we're not tearing up my pens. No, ma'am. Hey, say goodbye. Say bye. We'll see y'all later.